In this video, we'll be talking about sex, sex education, and employment issues for people on the autism spectrum. Um, this is my experience with autism and sex and sexuality, and it may not be everyone's experience, so it's important to know. Um, so I'm 36 years old, or 37 years old, sorry, I don't even know how old I am, um, but I, have a, I don't have a job, um, I don't work, I've had trouble keeping jobs, I've had, I get a lot of jobs, but I can't keep them. Um, and the reason being is a sexuality issue. Um, and relationship issue. So I've never had a girlfriend. I, I can't get a date. Um, and I don't know how to even go about it without money. Um, obviously, you can pay someone money to go on a date with you. They're going to go on a date with you. Um, but um, that's another story for a different video. But um, so what happens is, is when you have these higher level social skills, like dating, for example, flirting and dating and building relationships um, that you don't have. Um, I'm going to build a case here. I'm going to build an argument for you that lower level social skills. And we're going to say at some point on the spectrum, let's think of social skills as a spectrum, like autism is a spectrum. So there's a math line segment. There's an arrow on the left side and an arrow on the right side. Um, somewhere on the social skill spectrum, um, a, a skill, a skill itself transitions from an adaptive living skill to a higher level social skill, right? So, um, at some point on that spectrum of transition. Now, the problem is, is you almost need to have the higher level social skills be present in your life in order for the lower level adaptive living skills to make sense or be useful. Um, so adaptive living skills, in my experience, are useless if you don't have higher level flirting skills or higher level um, dating skills to build relationships. Because if you don't have relationships, what the heck do you use those adaptive learning skills for? They're pointless. Um, and so um, when it comes to sexuality and dating and relationships, if we don't work on these areas with autistic folks, we're, we're not only failing them at relationships and failing them at a chance to high quality of life um, and a high quality of um, you know independence and the choice making and dating and relationships, but we're failing them in areas of adaptive living because eventually what I learned was um, it's learned behavior, right? But I kept trying all these, adapt I was using all these adapt adaptive living skills and sometimes they don't always be easy. Adaptive living skills aren't always easy. It's hard work. Um, but I'm doing them. And I've I'm not mastered them, but I'm, I'm learning them and I'm getting better at them. Um, but the harder and harder I work at those, the, 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 I still have to work at the higher level. I'm still working at the higher level social skills like flirting and dating and things like that. Um, and as I'm working on those issues, uh, I'm not getting anywhere with flirting and dating and like um, building relationships and things like that because obviously like the services aren't geared towards that. We're not addressing those issues. Those aren't really goals that we're writing in treatment plans um, and behavior plans and things like that. Um, and so as my higher level social skills are failing me, I'm starting to notice that my lower level adaptive living skills are also failing me. So if we take a person who's got potential to be high functioning, level let's use talk about functioning levels i don't like labels so you've got a person who's over here on this like at this point on the line segment right here um the math line segment now they've got potential to keep growing and go this way and get higher higher level sales or skills um they can better their life but when we don't support them in their learning journey to build those higher level social skills we actually send them backwards because their adaptive living skills are going to fail um, so we're moving this way on the spectrum now. Um, and that's sad because that's going to lower quality of life for individuals on the spectrum. It's also going to um, present comorbid mental health challenges and things like that. Um, and so um, I just want people to understand that there's a direct correlation, a direct relationship between your higher level social skills like flirting and dating and relationship building um, than there is... It's a direct relationship to the adaptive living skills, okay? So you want me to work so hard on coin identification. I want to identify coins. That's great. Um, but my, my idol, Peter Gerhardt, says, behavior analyst out of New Jersey, there is no woman sitting in a bar somewhere that's going to reject me and not go home with me because I don't know how to identify coins. So one thing I've learned is that women care how you make them feel, okay? So for a woman, it's a feelings thing. Um, identifying a coin, telling her she's got a quarter or telling her she's got a penny, the difference between telling her she's got a quarter in her hand 
but the difference between telling her she's got a penny in her hand really doesn't help her a whole lot and it really doesn't give her a feeling um um especially in a world when we're living in a society where coins are going obsolete because inflation is so high coins don't really do you any good um so right now we're dealing with that um but um um so she doesn't care if i can tell her she's got a quarter nickel dime penny etc in her hand um and she doesn't care if i know what a quarter nickel dime is she cares how i make her feel um and so um we have to start looking at how do we teach higher level social skills so that people with autism can learn how to make people feel better um not just how to make the opposite sex feel better but in friendships you want to make people feel better as well and things like that now i will tell you i want to talk a little bit about social relationships real quick for me um being on the spectrum um i was just watching a great video by michael john carley who's well known in the spectrum as well um in the autism community um he was talking about how he doesn't really desire friendships that much um and i'm the same way like i don't really desire friendships that much i desire intimate relationships um and so um the closeness is what i desire so i think of friendship in like five levels right so um five different levels um so level one is like an acquaintance and level five is like a best friend um now the problem for me is being on the spectrum like i like level five i like intense relationships i like to be texting every day talking every day um just really close intense relationships and i like that with everybody in my life um and so i i don't like level one acquaintances um because to me that's exhausting why would you want to socialize with someone you don't know very well um like that doesn't make any sense in my brain um and so you know when i um unfortunately the problem for me is the way neurotypicals are wired in order to get to the level five you have to go through levels one two three and four to get there um and you know that's 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 one thing on its own but it's very exhausting to go through those levels to build a relationship um and so when i meet someone i come on really strong intense at level five and occasionally i get lucky and make a friend right away that's on my clicks with me on that level um but most of the time i don't um so i don't desire to have you know level one level two social relationships um acquaintances don't do anything for me they don't make me feel like a certain way they don't make me you know they don't give me a feeling um and everyone's after a feeling in life we're all after a feeling how does this person make me feel um which might be kind of selfish but i think it's true that we're all after a feeling how does this person make me feel um and so like we stop stop hammering so much on building we want to teach people with autism how to make friends we want to teach people with autism how to make friends i hear that all the time and that's great yes we want friends but are we asking ourselves what type of friendships what type of relationships do people with autism really desire so are we teaching them skills for friendship or are we teaching them skills for dating and relationships um now again we're going to say that all all friendships are actually social relationships but then we get into this dilemma like okay are are, are social skills the same for all levels of friendship so do i use the same social skills for a level one social relationship as i would use for a level five social relationship and now we're getting into a very advanced feature of behavior analysis is crap now we've got to teach the person how to generalize and apply social skills at different levels of social relationships um which isn't easy isn't easy to do um but yeah i don't desire a level one acquaintances um i can do quite well i mean obviously i make small talk if i go to the grocery store hi how are you you know the cashier things like that but i don't care to know about the cashier's most of the time i don't care to know about the cashier's day really it's it's i've learned to make small talk um and so i um you know i don't desire to have all these i don't desire to have 100, 100 level one social social acquaintances um what i desire to have is two or three level five close friendships and social relationships and one of those level threes uh level five social relationships i would desire to be a romantic relationship um and so um we really have to stop i'm excited about aba and where it's going because we're starting to talk about these values streams values based approaches to aba um and i think we have a lot of potential to listen to autistic people and get feedback from the stakeholder on this issue um and how we present support for autistic adults and autistic children um and so i'm, I'm really anxious about that and really excited about that um 
but I think we have to look at like, like for for example, right now the state of Indiana, um, they have hired for developmental disabilities. The state has hired employment consultants to come in and consult with the state on how to provide better support services for employment with, with individuals with IDD, intellectual and developmental disabilities. But I think they're in the wrong context. I think that they're they're missing the boat. Um, they're, they, they need to be hiring. If you want to help someone with a dis like me, if you want to help me keep a job, you need to be hiring a sexuality consultant to come in and work on sexual behavior with me so that I can keep a job. Um, like, I will not quit a job. I will not have trouble keeping a job because I don't know how to do the job. I can do any job there is. I've never had a problem keeping a job or never, uh, physically keeping a job as far as like being able to do the, the operational definition of what that job actually is. The problem for me is when I like someone, a girl, I like a girl and want to get to know her, um, I will get so ang anxious and I, all hell breaks loose because I will just go off the walls um, and I'll like send her a dozen roses or I'll like, um, you know, I'll like... Um, Get her phone number, try to get her phone number, get her on a date with me, um, and all these different behaviors that are inappropriate for the workplace setting. Um, I'm not losing my jobs because I can't do the job. I'm losing my job because I can't flirt. So let's look at the operational definition of why is he losing his job? Okay, so he's losing his job not because he can't do, he can't ring somebody up on the cash register and make accurate change. That's not why he's losing his job. He's losing his job because. Um, he can't flirt with the coworker, he, or he doesn't know how to flirt with the customer that comes in in appropriate ways. Um, now it's easy for us to sit here, sit back, and say, in a society, we live in a society that's very uncomfortable with this concept. But um, it's easy for us to sit here and say, well, it's a social rule that you shouldn't flirt with your coworker, or you shouldn't flirt with your your uh, customer. However, nine times out of ten, I know many neurotypical people who date their coworkers end up marrying their coworkers and things like that. So, are we really? Are we lying to autistic people? Are we lying to autistic people? Are we saying, or, or do we have double standards for autistic people? Because um, neurotypical people can go out and mingle with their coworkers and date their coworkers and marry their coworkers. But we're telling autistic people that's not okay to do. We should never do that. We're not going to teach you how to mingle with your coworkers or how to get a date with your coworker because that's inappropriate. Um, so is it easier for us to avoid the subject? Um, better stated is it easier for us to avoid the operational definition of what someone with autism wants and desires in their life and come up with our own operational definition of what someone with autism should have and desire in their life instead of actually helping them with what their desires are and the operational definition of what they want now i know a lot of this is obviously like behavior analysts are doing the best they can with the funding sources that they have okay so behavior analysts are are, are unfortunately constrained to what entrance is going to approve. Um, and, and that does ruin, sometimes that limits the quality of the behavioral intervention. Um, because a therapist might request to do one goal um, and work on one skill and might be told they can't work on that skill, which bring it down to a lower level because we're, at, we're not going to pay for a higher level of skill like flirting. So instead, we're going to pay for you to learn how to identify coins. Um, and so the BCBA is then trapped into a, a conspiracy theory, what I call a conspiracy theory of insurance dominating the treatment plan and dominating someone with autism's life. Um, and I'm actually writing a book about this right now, and I will be doing some more videos about this in more, more in depth. I don't want to take up too much of your time today because I just wanted to introduce this subject. So I just wanted to introduce, like, this is a big, big, big issue. Um, and I want to, I want us to start having a conversation about how sexuality affects employment and unemployment issues for adults on the autism spectrum. Um, I'm just gonna be. I'm not afraid. Like I don't have anything to lose. I don't have a job. Um, I'm not working for corporate America, so I can say things um, that might be, seem off the walls a little bit. But basically, I'm here to tell you. Um, to me, it's a developmental issue. I want to feel abreast, um, and I want to do that with a girl that I'm interested in, um, and um, that is a developmental milestone for me. That I feel like, in my opinion, talking to my neurotypical peers happens when you're a teenager not when you're 37 years old um so now not only do i have i'm late developmentally i missed about 20 years i'm 20 years late um but um on top of that just being a developmental just being a developmental milestone that's missed 
um, it's created comorbid mental health issues. Um, like I literally sometimes think about suicide because I cannot feel abreast. Um, and so like, if that's going on, how the hell are you supposed to function on the job and on the on adaptive living skills if you can't focus because you're so anxious about that one issue, that developmental milestone? Um, and so I think it's it's important that we understand autistic people's perspectives and we give them some, some guidance and support on what they actually need guidance and support with. Um, so, you know, like, how do we support this? How do we fix this problem? Um, and how do we make sure we're providing ethical care to someone like me on the autistic spectrum who desires to have a close romantic relationship or an intimate encounter um, with a woman um, who's obviously of the opposite sex for me, I'm heterosexual. So, but that might be totally different. We could also need to get into how we teach um, men how to connect with men and women how to connect with women. Cause some people are LGBTQ. Um, um, I don't know if I said that right. Cause I'm not. So, um, but I respect that community and like, um, want to support them as well. And so I, I think that, you know, we, we are sometimes limited in what we do because of insurance companies. Uh, not sometimes, a lot of the time, always. Okay, always. We're always limited in what we can do to support someone with autism because of insurance. Um, but think about this. So like, I want us to start having a conversation as a country in America. How does sexuality tie into employment and autism? Um, and I'd welcome your feedback and would love to hear your ideas on this and how we um, start addressing this issue. So thank you for watching this video and I look forward to your feedback.